Now, guys, I was looking at several different definitions of the word discipline, and I just took a whole bunch of definitions and just smashed them together because I needed to be very simple on what discipline means. First definition of the word discipline means to train oneself. It means to train your own self. The second definition I have is to manage your behavior, your actions, the way you live so that you can achieve God's kingdom agenda for your life. Discipline, to train myself or I manage my behavior, the way I act, the way I live so that I can actually do what it is God wants me to do. Discipline has a wife or a husband, whatever you want to say. They're married to the word self-control. So the word self-control means to manage your emotions, your feelings, and your impulses so that you can achieve God's kingdom agenda for your life. So in other words, what God is saying is I need you to manage how you feel. I need to manage your impulses. I need you to manage your behavior. I need you to manage how you live because there's something I'm trying to do in your life. Lose your neighbor and say, take the journey. Uh, Discipline is a prerequisite of success. Discipline is a prerequisite of success. What is a prerequisite? It is, the con- it, it, is, it, is, it is a prior condition that has to be done before something else can happen. Prerequisite. It is a prior condition that has to take place before something else can happen. So when I say that discipline is a prerequisite of success, I'm saying you got to do discipline before you have success. Oh, y'all, there is no, no, hear me, hear me good. There is no success without discipline. There is no next level without discipline. There is no progression without discipline. LeBron James didn't become LeBron James because he wasn't disciplined. Michael Jordan did not become Michael Jordan because he was not disciplined. And we love this one, number 15. Patrick Mahomes did not become Patrick Mahomes because he was not disciplined. Let me help you. Let's talk a little bit about Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I'm going to use him in my sermon today. I was watching Netflix, and I don't know if you guys have seen, but there's this show called Quarterback. And I was watching how much he puts into, listen, he works out. He's disciplined to where he works out. Guys, he's disciplined, and he shows up to practice. Now, what is practice, you might ask? Practice is where he gets with his fellow teammates out stuff that's from the playbook so he can actually start to learn how to execute what's in the playbook and then do you know that Patrick Mahomes has the unmitigated gall to then when he gets the playbook from the coach the playbook from the coach he go home and he reads it and he studies it we're talking about discipline And God just let me know something when I was thinking about the show because I had watched it and I looked at his training and I looked at how he goes to practices and how he studies the playbook. Listen, 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 listen. The reason why some of y'all can't run the play of faith, can't run the play of joy, can't run the play of forgiveness is because you don't study the playbook. He gave us 66 books with a whole lot of plays. But instead of doing that, we want to take matters into our own hands. Study the playbook so you can run the play. Oh, oh, I'm about to make a couple of y'all mad because then he also goes to practice. He gets with his teammates so that they can go head on and figure out how to run these plays. I call it Bible study and coming to church on Sunday. Get with your teammates and figure out how to run the play. Ooh. 
a lot of us, why are we still talking about coming into the house of God? Why are we still talking about coming to practice? And then you wonder why all these things is going on in your life where you miss practice. You want to know why? You missing the play. God's saying, run the play. I don't know what you're looking at me for. I gave you my playbook. Why are you looking at me? Run the play. But we won't run the play because we don't want to get into the playbook. And we don't want to come to practice. Why are we still talking? I'm still talking about discipline. Oh. Listen, David, David had to be disciplined as a shepherd before he could become a king. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, that's when David was anointed king, but he didn't get to take the throne to 2 Samuel chapter 2. So what happened between all those other chapters? I'll tell you what happened. God says, I need you to go out there and be a shepherd. I need you to learn how to fight lions and tigers and bears. I need you to be disciplined and obey me so that you can actually handle being a king. Oh. Woo. Yep. And some of us, we're in our disciplined state. And we don't want to be there. We're like, oh. I'm sick of this. I don't want to be here. But let me encourage you that the place where you're at right now where you have to discipline yourself is actually exactly where God wants you to be. He said that is the place where I'm actually trying to do a little bit with you. I'm trying to actually get you to understand that it's me and me only. I'm trying to get you to understand some things in that place of discipline. Just run the play. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to put myself on blast. So show me my first picture. Show me my first picture. Y'all look at this picture. It's me. Y'all look at this picture. I'm showing you what someone who had an area of undisciplined, who wasn't disciplined, I'm showing you what it looks like. Show me another picture. Show me another picture. Look. Now here I am. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, love Jesus, hallelujah, shanda, all of that. But you can look at me and tell that there was an area in my life that wasn't disciplined. And you might say, well, how in the world could we do that? Because I was carrying too much weight. And what seems to happen is when we're not disciplined, we're walking around carrying stuff that we ain't got no business carrying, weight that we ain't got no business carrying, showing up in places we ain't got no business being in because we have not disciplined ourselves. Listen, I know this is not a feel-good message, but if you do it, I promise later you'll feel good. He said, I need you to discipline yourself. Some of y'all think y'all hiding. Oh, oh. Some of you think you're hiding. You think you're hiding. Don't nobody see me. Don't nobody see me. But we could see you because you're carrying too much weight. Could it be? The reason why you're carrying too much weight is because there's an area in your life that's not disciplined. Could that be it? Let me help you. Let me give you some examples because I just love you like that. Some of us are carrying around the weight of relationships. You ask God, God, is he the one? He said, absolutely not. He said, God, is she the one? No, 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 no. But we didn't discipline ourselves and we went out with him anyway. And then we start to develop a relationship. Now it's hard to break away from them knowing they ain't worth a plum nickel. Now it's hard to break away because now we love him and we love her. Now you stressed out, you irritated because they ain't actually worth nothing. They dragging you down. They dragging your spirit down all because you didn't discipline yourself and say, you know what? God said no, so I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to discipline myself. I'm going to do what it is God wants me to do. He do look good, but not enough to get me caught up. I'm going to... So we're carrying around the weight of relationships. Oh, y'all need more? Oh, I'm going to come on the street in a minute. We're carrying around the weight of unforgiveness. Listen, we're carrying around the weight of unforgiveness. Listen, God said, forgive them and let it go. 
but you didn't exercise discipline and you didn't forgive them. So now you're looking at everybody with a side eye. Listen, God's trying to bring people in your life to bless you, but he can't because you're looking at them crazy, thinking that they were going to do to you what the next person does because you didn't exercise discipline and just forgive them. You mean to tell me that now everybody got to pay for what my daddy did? Listen, y'all, and I'm not being unsensitive. Please hear my heart. I'm not being unsensitive, but some of y'all, God didn't told to let it go. It's keeping you from where I'm trying to get you. He didn't told you to forgive them, let it go. And the only person that's caught up in jail ain't them. It's you. I'm talking about carrying the weight. You think you're hiding? Uh-uh. How about this one? How about this one? The weight of disobedience. The weight of disobedience. Let me tell you something. When you disobey God, it's automatic weight gain. It's automatic weight gain. You ain't got no peace. You ain't got no joy. You're uncomfortable. So what we try to do, we try to sex away his voice. We try to drink away his voice. We try to work away his voice. We try to be busy enough so we can clown out, crowd and get his voice. Listen, listen, listen. Oh. You know that Jesus is saying, I need you to be committed. I need you to love on me. I know some of you, he's even called to different ministries, but we won't be disciplined. Oh, I'm not giving up my Thursday. I'm not giving up my Saturday. I'm not giving up my time. I'm not giving up my talent. And don't even mention treasure. I won't do it. And then you wonder why you're irritable and you ain't got no joy and you ain't got no peace. That's because you're out of alignment. I'm talking about carrying weight. Let me help you. You ain't hiding. Do y'all know that he's the king of keys and the Lord of lords? He sees everything. He sees everything. So when you think you're hiding, he will go ahead and whisper to pastor and say, nope, address it. Nope, minister, Pastor Kenya, address it. Pastor Jordan, address it. Pastor Anthony, address, Minister Essence. And then you'll be like, how did they even know? Because you can't hide. We can see the weight. So we're going to go get to our first trip, scripture. All that was introduction. How y'all doing? <laughs> we're going to get to our first scripture. Can you help me? Is that Lonzo back there? Can you get first scripture? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. The scripture says, don't you realize in a race that everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. But this is what excited me about what, what pa Paul was talking to the church in Corinth. This is what excited me. He said, so run to win. Guys, in other words, he's saying he, he gave a, a parallel between, we call it the Olympic Games. I think back then they called it the Isthmian Games. But it, a race, you know, when you see the Olympic runners race, he said everybody runs, but there's only one winner. He says, so run like you're going to be the run winner. It is not enough to just be saved. It is not enough to just participate. He said, I need you to run to win. All right. Stay with me. Verse 25 says, all athletes, oh, there go that cuss word. All athletes are what? <laughs> Disciplined in their training. What? All athletes are disciplined in their training. Now, they do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. Listen, guys, even runners got to be disciplined. So what makes you think the house of God doesn't have to be disciplined? They dis they're disciplined in their training. They're doing it for a gold medal or they're doing it for a prize that's corruptible. But what we do it for is I'm talking about e eternal glory. We're trying to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Guys, that lasts for eternity. When we go to be with Jesus, ain't stop, won't stop. We in there. Verse 26, Paul is saying, Dr. Church, he said, so I run with purpose. In every step, I am not just shadow boxing. Paul said, listen, I'm not just out here doing stuff. He said, I'm living with purpose. I'm actually living my life with purpose, on purpose, for purpose. I don't just be out here doing whatever as if I don't have an aim. 
why is we as Christians just get up every day and just do whatever? And then, oh, oh, oh gosh. We out here just doing whatever, whatever. And then we want God's backup. Whew. All right. What else does the scripture say? Uh-oh. 27 says, I, I do what? I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I'm going to be disqualified. Look at what Paul says. Paul says, I'm not, I'm, I'm no different than you. He said, I got to discipline and train my own self because I don't want to tell you something that I missed the mark. <sighs> do y'all know that athletes, guys, there are certain things they won't eat. There's certain places they won't even go. So tell me why is it so easy for us to eat foolishness? The minute gossip comes up, here we go. What they say, what they say, what they say. <laughs> Y'all, we have got to watch in what we put in. Because guess what? If you put that in, guess what? It's coming out. And then you'll be like, well, where did that come from? You put it in there. 